Good morning. Welcome to worship. Can you, everybody hear me okay? Okay, good deal. Last week it was a problem. This week it doesn't seem to be, which I am grateful for. My name is Pastor Bryce. We have a couple of visitors with us today. And on behalf of Pastor Renee, Sister Tashina, and Sean, and our celebration choir, our ushers, and our tech team, a very hearty and uh, sincere welcome to you all. We have just a few brief announcements before we dive in. The first is Poor Theology, our monthly gathering um, over appetizers and libations at Shore 96 will be next Thursday at 6.30 uh, on the 20th of October. We will be meeting inside going forward. So we had been on their patio throughout the summer. We look forward to going back out on their patio in the late spring, but are also excited to be able to continue this into the fall and winter months uh, as we use their event room. Uh, next week is our next continuation uh, with our book study. Uh, so if you are a part of that group, make sure you get your chapters read for that. And are you in the Shepherd's Hall? So we're going to try it in Shepherd's Hall next week. Uh, last week when you met, you were in the library, a very hearty group. We're going to try to move that group to keep that momentum uh, in Shepherd's Hall. Uh, Pastor Renee, you've got an announcement. You all have this little uh, orange sheet in your bulletin, right? Okay, golden rod, I think it's called. So it's our stewardship conversation happening again. We had it on uh, September 24th. We're having it again today. These are conversations about where you think you would like our uh, finances to head and what you would like us to focus on in our ministry work as we head into 2023. I, I and the governing board could certainly come up with a plan, but we thought it'd be good if we asked you. So Dave Webb, your governing board president, and I will be standing outside in the narthex. You have the sheet up there of the suggestions that came from our previous uh, conversation, and we have another post-it note up there. We're going to take suggestions from you guys. We're giving you this so you can be thinking about the questions that we're going to be asking you out there. And if you can't join us in between these two services, feel free to fill this out and get it to the office or drop it in the offering plate or email me. Uh, we want to hear from you as we shape our coming year in 2023. Thank you, Pastor Renee. Uh, the last announcement for this morning is after, well, during the sermon, I want you to check your calendars for October 30th. So if you're looking for something to do during the sermon, you can look at your calendars. October 30th from 2.30 to 4 is our annual trunk and treat. We have 14 trunks signed up right now. We're a little bit under halfway to what my goal would be. Uh, we would love to have you there. Last year, we saw over 300 kids come through and receive some candy at the Safe Community event. And we look forward to building on that momentum um, and would love to have you sign up for that. There is no cost to the community for the event, but we are asking if you do bring a trunk to bring candy for 300, and then I will restock if you undoubtedly run out. Uh, if you have any questions, talk to me, but this is an event that I think our community really looks forward to. Not only our community here at Shepherd, but our broader community that surrounds us. What a great space to engage with our younger community members. All right, I believe that's it. We good? Any other announcements? College care packages, thank you. I knew we missed one. Uh, take a peek in your bulletins. Sister T is collecting items uh, for college care packages. Uh, you can drop those off at the main office. I know it says in the gray bins for Ralph Reader, please bring college care package stuff to the main office to get to Sister Tashina quicker. All right, let's take a deep breath in and let it out. Breathe in and hold and release. And as you do that, let that bring you into a space of holiness, of sacredness, as we enter our time of worship. Breathe through Sean's welcome.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to share uh, a word of peace with those that you came to worship with and a sign of peace with those around you. God's peace. God's peace. Now, beloveds, I invite you to rise in body or spirit as you are able for our gathering song, Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, know that you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power of, through the Holy Spirit, and that may Christ may live with you in your hearts through faith. Amen.
I invite you all to join with me in our prayer of the day. Benevolent and merciful God, when we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us. That with the fear we may love our neighbors and serve them. Be with us in this time of worship. May it be ever pleasing in your sight and may it fill us for the work you have created for us to do for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Our reading today comes from the book of Psalms. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sally. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. In case you were having your cup of coffee at home, we're grateful you're here. Happy we, birthday. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. I appreciate that. So there are lots of different ways we can make noise and give thanks, right? I was one way of giving thanks for good morning. We're grateful the morning is here. Thank you, Tishina and Bryce. I appreciate you doing that. What are other ways that we can give thanks, that we're thankful, that we can show thankfulness, not just say it? Clapping, right? Clapping. Or, yeah, golf clap, right? Tiny golf clap. That was for my husband out there. We can sing, right? We can, say, we can sing, uh, praise God from whom all blessings flow. There's lots of different ways. We have a story that Pastor Bryce is going to read in a second about these lepers, these people that were taken away from their family, were not allowed to be in their community. Um, I mean, we like the idea of our sequestering in our home sometimes, but they were done it forcefully and not allowed to see anybody. And Jesus comes by and heals 10 of them. And then he says, go show yourselves to the priests and, and, and you will be made well. And, they're, and as they go, they're made well. And one of them realizes how thankful he is in that. And he turns around and he, and he throws himself down and he gives thanks to Jesus right there. There are lots of ways that we can be thankful. And there are lots of things we're thankful for. So name some things you guys are thankful for. Shepherd of the Hills, thank you for saying that, Shepherd of the Hills. I'm sorry, what? Sunshine. Grandkids. Things you're thankful for. Your husband. Oh, nice. Well done, Sally. Cold weather, Pastor Bryce says. Chocolate. Yes, yes. There's lots of things we are thankful for. And our text reminds us to show it. Lots of different ways we can show it. But God is glorified when we do show it. So let us always remember to do that. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we are grateful for the sunshine and for Shepherd of the Hills and for partners and for families and for things that we are thankful for. Help us always remember to be thankful and show our thankfulness in lots of different ways. Uh, and today, holy God, we are going to say out loud how thankful we are. So um, we're going to say amen really loud. One, two, three. Amen. amen. Thanks, you guys. 
Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Our gospel text for this morning comes out of the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning in the 11th verse. After leaving where Jesus was last week and was on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him, and keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and praising God with a loud voice, he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But where are the other nine? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you all, beloved, from God, our creator, and from Jesus, our savior and our redeemer. How good it is to be gathered here and share this call of Christian life with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, giver of all good and from whom all blessings flow, we give you thanks. May you give us an opportunity to take pause, to take stock. May you crack us open and make us raw so that your word in us takes root like never before. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. How do you express your gratitude? Also, how do you identify what you are grateful for? These are just some of the things that I found myself asking this week. You see, we've been on this track of Jesus making his way toward Jerusalem for these last several months. You see, in Luke 9, we read that Jesus told the disciples that he was heading to Jerusalem for the last time. He was setting the stage for what would be his death. And in the space of the following eight chapters from that declaration, we have seen a different side of Jesus. An almost less than patient one than we'd like to experience. And your pastoral staff, um, how do we say, has really enjoyed preaching these texts these last months. Jesus sounds angry at times, frustrated in others, or as some might remind us, that is just in need of a Snickers. But this morning we get a slightly different side of Jesus. You see, Jesus has since departed from where he was last week telling those who are gathered that they have a faith at least the size of a mustard seed and what they can accomplish with that faith. And began moving again toward Jerusalem and in doing so traversed in between Samaria and Galilee. The space where Jesus trod is an interesting place because he wasn't anywhere in particular. Not fully Galilee and not fully Samaria. Now, Jesus would have certainly been far better off in Galilee because he was a Jew and Galilee was where the Jews lived. And Samaria, well, it's where the Samaritans were. And Jews didn't like Samaritans. In fact, they loathed and hated those neighbors. And yet Jesus was straddling this place that wasn't anywhere in particular. Jesus was in a borderland. 
And on this journey, Jesus encounters the group of lepers that were to be healed. Now, leprosy at that time, if you're not familiar, was regarded as a disease of such profound uncleanliness that full removal from the community to a literal leper colony was the prescription. And in fact, those without leprosy were inquire, required to go through a full ritualistic cleansing in order to re-enter their community after departing the colony. For Jesus to enter this place says a lot. But then to heal, and not just one, but ten, speaks not only to the compassion, but also the love of our Savior. So Jesus enters a space that most of us would have shied away from. It's hard to contextualize that for ourselves, but think maybe a COVID ward today and how uncomfortable and nervous we might get entering one of those. And here are these lepers asking for Jesus' mercy. They were blind to all else except what was in front of them, Jesus. And it's in that blindness that I want to drill down on. You see, in reading what was written in Luke, we can infer with some degree of certainty that what the lepers sought. If you're sick, you want healing, right? And they knew it was Jesus, and if they knew it was Jesus, then they presumably knew what Jesus was capable of. And they were so focused on their own needs that all else took a back seat if it was granted a seat at all. Are we so different, you and I? Because our lives can get so caught up in the stuff that we would neglect to see the other stuff that's around us, the other good that we share space with, leaving us blinded with blinders that would force us to an inward focus and self-involved area. And this inward focusedness can prevent us from seeing what else we've got. The good that dwells in our lives. That is always there. Now I'm grateful for Pastor Renee's children's message because it offered us an opportunity to give thanks and to voice what we were grateful for. And it could have gone one of two ways. There could have been crickets or it could have been rapid fire. We have this list of things that we are grateful for that's always bubbling at the surface. Faith, family, friends, community, work, jobs, homes, those things. But what about when we've exhausted the list that we always get thankful for? Is that all that we're thankful for or do we have more that we're grateful for? I would argue that we have a great deal to be grateful for, more than what we often think to give thanks for. Is it easy for us to take stock and note of those things and to just continue to rattle off without thinking, or do you have to sit and ponder for a bit? Because I do when I get past that list. Because taking stock and giving thanks for that ever-present, non-stopped list is sometimes not easy. But the thing is, identifying what we are grateful for reminds us that there is so much to our lives that we have been given that is what is directly in front of us. Giving thanks looking outside of ourselves, allows us to remove those blinders and to take stock. How often do we really do that? I mean, truly do that. Because it is not as often as I would like that I would do these things. What is it like for you? 
What would it like for us to spend some real intentional time each and every day doing this? Because it's an actual thing. Ignatius of Loyola created a practice called examine, which is literally that. Examining events, days, our lives, and the good that has accompanied it to give thanks, to look through our days and to find and identify what we are grateful for. But is just identifying what we are grateful for all that there is to it? I am thankful for my family. Or is there more to it? Last week, Pastor Renee spoke of each of the things in our lives that we do as living them out as little acts of faith. How can this practice of giving thanks not be one of those acts of faith? The ten lepers were called to go and present themselves to the priests. They had to do this in order to regain entry into their community. The priest was the gatekeeper. To put it another way, their informed word carried the weight of law and decided who was in and who was out. The ten were healed, and as they went to the priest, one came back to express their profound gratitude to Jesus. Think of the implications for these people who were healed. In being healed, they were then able to rejoin community. They were able to possess a job again. They became a part of the family that they had been separated from. They were able to hold their parents, hug their kids, embrace their spouses, throw their nieces and nephew into the air. How could you not stop and give thanks to God for the gift that they had been given. But what of the other nine? They get a bad rep, right? They were, are looked down on us for not going back and thanking Jesus. Though I'm not sure I can entirely blame them because they were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. You see, in verse 14, when he saw them, Jesus... He said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. Does it make the one that came back's return any less important? Because if you read unto, further on, the one who returned was a Samaritan. Samaritans by the Jews were hated and reviled. Chances are, presenting himself to the priest, the Samaritan would have been turned away anyway. So if we bear those things in mind, is that Samaritan's return any less important than the other nine? Because the nine who didn't come back were doing what Jesus had told them to do. Listening to Jesus is an act of faith. Doing what is commanded is an act of faith. Because what we don't get in these verses is what the other nine did upon returning home. Think about the things that they would have been able to share with those who would have been able to listen. Come and hear about the person who healed me, who restored my life. And he offered healing to a Samaritan too. A Samaritan. Can you imagine? How can I not do something because of this? And this is where it comes down to it for us. There is a myriad of ways for us to give thanks. We give thanks by saying it. We remind our young ones to say thank you for the gifts that they have been given. What do you say, Simon? Thank you. 
We remind those as they are growing that it is important to give thanks. And there is power in naming things that we have been given. Identifying and naming what we are thankful for is a deeply rich and important practice. But how else can we give thanks? For those who have been given much, much can be expected. We have a great deal of abundance. For some of us, it rests in our abilities. Some have the gift of manual labor and being able to do. Some teach, and for others, it's patience or counsel. Still others have the gift of healing and repair, and still others, it's an abundance of finances. Our individual giftedness is what we are grateful for, or what we are grateful for, varies from each of us to the next. But with it, we have the opportunity to take what we are grateful for and use it for the betterment of the world around us. The good in our life comes from God. There is no question about it. But what would it look like if we took what we are good at, what we are grateful for, the abundance we have, and used those gifts, operating with them out of acts of faith to continue the kingdom construction that we are so often invited into to build and toil with our God for what our God has envisioned. I cannot for the life of me see these acts as not being infectious in a good way. But by stepping into this space of examine, of taking stock of what we have and what we are grateful for, we are able to see what we've got and give thanks. We are invited into this space not because we seek more, but because we already possess. Let your light so shine before others, we hear in Matthew that they may see your good works and give praise to your God who is in heaven. Stop and give thanks, this Luke 17 text reminds us. But think about what it doesn't tell us and what we have the opportunity to do with what we have been given. Amen. Beloveds, I invite you to rise and body your spirit as you are able for our song of the day, Baptized in Water.
Siblings in Christ, I invite you to join me along with Christians around the globe as we confess our common faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Dear siblings in Christ, trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Majestic God, we give you thanks for the land and water, for seed time and harvest. Break down the boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. And we pray for those impacted by natural disasters, especially those in the aftermath of hurricanes Ian and Julia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations and all peoples, we give thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. You know them each by name, Lord. Yet today we especially lift to you Dave, Jim, Bev, Margaret, Ryan, Jason, Doug, Rosie, Kathy, Zanea, Wayne, Pastor Michelle, Ben, Luke James, Lola, and Julie. May you hold each of them in your loving embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of love, you know the depths of our hearts and care about the things that we hold concern for. We lift those things to you now, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We lift them all to you trusting that you hear us when we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, today we lift to you the family of Steve Jitala in the wake of his passing this past week. We pray that you comfort his children and loved ones in the midst of their grief. And may the promise of your resurrection be a comforting reminder that through you, death does not have the last say. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Holy God, as we continue this time of interim within our office, we pray in thanksgiving for our interim director of operations and the work that he is doing. We pray for our interviewing team and the discernments that they are engaged within. And we pray for our future permanent director, whomever they may be. May the work of our office be pleasing to you, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of community, you lift up the oppressed and breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. You call us to care for our neighbor. We pray in thanksgiving for the partners in ministry that we do this work alongside of. For True Light of the Lord Korean Church, for Hmong Peace Church, for the Way Seventh-day Adventist Church, for the Church of Living God, the St. Paul Area Synod, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, for Reconciling Works, the Lutheran World Federation, and the World Council of Churches, for, Kitam for our sibling church in Kitamali, Tanzania, for Holy Hammers and Habitat for Humanity, for Ralph Reader Food Shelf, 
and open hands midway. May your light shine brightly through these spaces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence. Bring healing to all wounds, make whole all that is broken, speak truth to all illusion, and shed light in every darkness. We pray all of these in your holy and precious name. Amen. Now, dear siblings, it is the time in our service when we recognize our offering, because all that we are and all that we have, first and foremost, belongs to our God. If you give online, you can do so at SOHSV.org. If you'd like to give of your time, connect with any of the staff, and we'd be happy to help you do so. And if you give in person, the ushers will now assist you with your offering. Would you please stand and join me in a moment of offering prayer. God of light and beauty, every gift is from you. Even our ability to give is a sign of your love for us. We offer you what we have and what we are. Use our gifts to give birth to a world of love and peace, where greed is not how we operate, where thankfulness is surrounding us, where all people have what they need. In your holy name we pray, amen. Ending our time of Holy Communion, for those of you at home, make ready your little elements for uh, your uh, bread and wine. Um, please know that everyone is welcome at this table. We always say that, but we mean it. If you are someone who uh, is here, we uh, invite you to the table because these are the gifts of God for the people that God loves. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And let's pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For anyone taking communion in their seats or for all of you at home, you may take your elements now because this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. I also now invite all of our communion assistants up um, to help us with communion and the ushers will assist you forward in just a moment.
Thank you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. Let's join our voices together with our communion prayer. Gracious God, we have received the elements of bread and wine. We have come to the table, and because we are loved, you in Christ receive us and offer to us healing and hope. Forgive our stubbornness, heal our brokenness, challenge us to truly live lives of faithfulness and discipleship. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's turn our voices together for our sending song, Baptized and Set Free. A real quick word about this one. This might be new to you this morning. This is uh, written by Kathy Skogan Soldner, who is a local composer here in the Twin Cities. I thought it fit particularly well with today's message, how we are baptized and sent out grateful into the world. If you're not sure of it, at first the choir is ready to go. They'll lead it through. Come in and sing when you feel like you're ready to go. Baptized and free and thankful, may you go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.